Okay, everyone, I'm going to tell you a quick short story. When I was looking at different medical specialties, I wanted to find one where I won't be out of a job in the future. So I picked urology, thinking, oh, there's going to be a lot of older people, and there are always going to be people needing urologic services. Well, little did I know that urologists will be in such short supply. So whenever possible, I'm going to try to keep you out of the urologist's office, and I'm going to talk about one of the ways, or one of the conditions that we treat, and several ways that we can uh, pre prevent uh, kidney stones. Kidney stones occur in about one in 10 Americans, believe it or not. That's why you ask around, you're going to find people who are going to say, oh my gosh, that was the worst pain ever, ever. Woman, I've treated women who have had children, and they tell me that it is worse than childbirth. They would rather, I, I had one lady who, kid you not, she said that I would rather have twins carry them and deliver them than to have another kidney stone after I took care of her stone. I kid you not. So you can, and, and it's not uncommon for spouses who come in with their husbands and they share the story that, oh my gosh, my husband who's in the military, super macho guy, was literally crawled up, balled up on the ground in the bathroom crying like a little baby because of kidney stone pain. So whatever I can do to help decrease your risk of kidney stones, we're going to talk about very briefly here in this video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist at Sunrise Urology in Gilbert, Arizona. So let's talk about kidney stone prevention as I am about to perform 10 surgeries tomorrow on kidney stones, just on kidney stones. So I will never be out of a job, <laughs> never be out of a job. So just kidney stones alone or also men with enlarged prostates, that alone, I'll never be out of a job. So anyway, my worries about Picking a profession where I won't be obsolete, that's moot. Okay, let's talk about kidney stone uh, prevention. There are some ways that you can empirically decrease your risk of kidney stones. And one of the easiest ways to decrease the risk of kidney stones is by drinking a lot of water. You want to increase your water intake. And typically, you'll hear people say, well, 8 to 10 ounces of eight to 10 glasses of water a day. Well, nobody, nobody measures like how much you actually drink. I certainly don't measure how much fluid that I'm intaking every single day. It's a hassle, right? So what is an easy way for you to figure out if you're drinking enough water? Well, by looking at the color of your urine, typically, if you're not taking a lot of vitamin C or eating things that changes the color of your urine, then you can use your urine color as a good barometer regarding how dilute or how concentrated it is. When your body has enough water, it gets rid of the excess. And when it gets rid of excess, that means if, if there's a lot of excess, your urine is going to be light yellow or nearly colorless. But if, it's, if your body's holding on to a lot of fluid, and it creates very concentrated urine, meaning it, it gets rid of all that stuff in very small amount of water or, or urine, then it's gonna look dark yellow. So when you're not drinking enough water, your urine is going to look dark yellow. And that's a barometer, that's an indication to you that you are not drinking enough water. That's a very, very easy way to tell. You don't have to carry a bottle around. You can just look at the color of your pee. All right. So second thing you can do is reduce your sodium intake. And when I, when I tell my patients this, they all tell me, doc, I don't add salt to my food. Well, guess what? Most of your sodium, most of the salt that you get from your diet is not coming from added salt, stuff that you put on your food. It's stuff it's sodium that's most most commonly in pre-processed processed meats and processed foods. I love my beef jerky. Sometimes they're very salty, salted nuts, and I certainly love my barbecue flavor chips, potato chips. And if you look at the sodium content on those things, if you eat a lot of it, that's a lot of sodium, and that, that can increase your risk of kidney stones. You also, to prevent kidney stones, you also want to moderate the amount of dairy products and also foods that are high in oxalate and animal protein. Certain, certain types of 
foods that are high in oxalate are certain types of nuts and also very green leafy vegetables like spinach. Most of us are not eating excess amounts of, most Americans are not eating excess amounts of green leafy vegetables. So that usually is not a concern, but I do, I did have patients who ate a lot of these vegetables. So cutting back on that may be helpful in decreasing the risk of kidney stones. And there are also water bottles for those of you who are into tech. There are water bottles that now that are Bluetooth enabled that remind you to drink and fill it up and measures the amount of water that you intake. If you really want to measure the uh, amount of fluid that you're, you're drinking, amount of water that you're drinking. Okay, so those are empiric things that you can do to decrease your stone risk. What about some dietary supplements? Well, that's been around for a while. And uh, lemon juice and water has been well known to decrease the uh, the uh, citrate or decrease the uh, uh, increase the citrate in your urine and also uh, increase your urinary pH to help minimize the risk of stones. And um, that you have to keep if you're using that, you have to keep in mind not to take in too much sugar because often that lemon juice can be a little tart so you add a lot of sugar which has other untoward side effects and um, there has been other supplements out there and most of the supplements that are available out on the market unfortunately don't contain the ingredients that you need to decrease the risk of kidney stones there's something called moonstone uh, apparently you, you use one packet twice a day it has been uh, postulated to increase urinary citrate and pH and decrease the supersaturation of calcium oxalate in your urine. So hopefully that will decrease the risk of your kidney stones. So for certain situations, there are other med uh, medications that we can use to alkalize urine, especially for those patients with uric acid stones and cysteine stones. And potassium citrate has been around since the 1980s. Unfortunately, right now, that particular medication is expensive and sometimes hard to get. So you want to prevent kidney stones, and then you have a medication that's expensive and hard to get. Well, that doesn't work, right? So there are alternatives. If you can't get potassium citrate, you may want to consider sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate. Ask your urologist about those medications instead of potassium citrate if potassium citrate access is a problem due to cost or availability. Okay, and and there are, uh, let me talk about something that is uh, relatively new, and that is a way to reduce the urinary oxalate, re reduce the amount of oxalate in your urine. You see calcium gets dumped in the urine, oxalate gets dump, dumped in the urine, and when you, when you put calcium and oxalate together, well, guess what, they form calcium oxalate stones, which are the most common types of stones that we form. So calcium oxalate, Stone formation depends on calcium and oxalate. And if there's a way to decrease your oxalate in the urine, it may help. So these there are a couple of newer in-development medications like oxalobacter formigenes or oxalobacter decarboxylase. These medications decrease the oxalate secretion in the urine it may help decrease the formation of calcium oxalate stones. There has been some talk about decreasing what is the normal amount of oxalate in the urine may, may, may even uh, be helpful. So who, know, who knows? But that is under development and is still being studied. Lastly, I'm going to talk about genetics, genetic diagnosis and therapy of kidney stones. This is really, really new and it is still under development, but for some uh, some societies are, are recommending that we run genetic tests on every pediatric patient who forms kidney stones. So whether or not, the thing is you, you have these genetic markers, but then what do you do once you get the results, right? So that's, it's great to know that there's susceptibility, but then what do you do? How do you proceed subsequent to getting that diagnosis? So those are some of the things that are available out there. We talked about empiric therapy, like increasing water, decreasing protein, decreasing sodium, and moderating your uh, diet, dairy products and, and uh, watching your amount, the amount of animal protein that you eat. We talked about smart water bottles. We talked about dietary supplements. 
alternatives to the typical alkalizing agent, the potassium citrate, and also reducing the uh, urinary oxalate with a couple of new medications that are under development, and lastly, genetic testing for kidney stone formation. So hopefully this information has been helpful in possibly reducing the risk of your kidney stone so I don't have to see you in my office and in the operating room. So as usual, if you have any questions in the comments, uh, leave them in the comments, and I look forward to uh, interacting with everyone. Take care.